I'm the art toy advocate, Nick Curtis, and today we have a full case of Amanda Pissell's Barrels figures, which feature her painterly designs on Kid Robot's Dunny, Micro Money, Micro Tricky, and Micro Raffi platforms. This is really the first production blind box series to mix Dunny's and Money World pieces. Something that seems to me like a brilliant idea, allowing for a great diversity of base shapes that an artist can play with. Though for a Dunny collector purist, I can see it being a turnoff. For those unfamiliar with the blind box concept, the quick lowdown is this. You buy a sealed blind box. Like this one. And it shows you on the box most if not all, of the designs in the miniseries, but you have no way of knowing which figure will be in any given box. I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's fun and makes the anticipation of getting your favorite designs all the greater. To make things a bit trickier, some designs are rarer than others. You see, each design has a ratio, like 6 and 60 denoting that if you bought 60 blind boxes, then you would, by percentages, receive six of that design. And, of course, some have mysterious unlisted ratios, which people typically assume makes them the rarest of all. Okay, I have 20 blind boxes here, so I better get opening them. I truly lucked out. I gotten 13 of the 14 designs in this miniseries. I'm missing one of the monies. And I got a bunch of duplicates as well. But it's pretty rare to get the entire miniseries in one case, so this close to being the complete series, I'm not looking this gift horse in the mouth. Immediately, I am floored by how Kid Robot thought out the simple, and smart manner to emulate Bissell's style in these works. I'm obviously not talking about her more geometric, angular body shapes, but rather her hand-painted aesthetic. By only adding one paint mask to each piece, they've created the impression that the base is covered in brush strokes. I don't know how commonly known this is, but when Vassell first was trying to get into designer toys, Kid Row approached her about doing a piece, but they ended up canceling the project, as they felt they couldn't properly visualize her style in three dimensions. I'd say they figured out a perfect way to do it here, the brushstroke layer definitely being a solid touch on these that really lets Vassell's voice come out all the more. Overall, the designs all look spot on. There are several full interpretations of former Vassell creations, like the Griffagon, a cross between a giraffe and a dragon, which Vassell initially tackled in 2010's TikTok Apocalypse series and the Dragon Scout Master, a bit of an update to Vassell's 2009 Dragon Scout figure, which depicted a dragon that ate a Girl Scout and thus became one, though this new version instead has a campfire in its belly. And a campfire was an accessory for the original piece, thus bringing it full circle. 
a couple of these other feral figures incorporate classic Vassell elements into these otherwise new designs. Like Jackrabbit Frost that has Vassell's gnome from TikTok Apocalypse in its belly, and the seasonally appropriate Krampus, which has a little baby in its stomach, one similar to those seen in her baby-eating crocodile character from 2008's Vivisect playset. Throughout all the characters, though, Vassell wisely kept each platform representative of the same animal types. All the micro trickies, except the fox in the hen house here, are cats. All the micro raffies are dragons and goats. All the dunnies, except for the Krampus, are donkeys and rabbits. And all the micro monies are monkeys, including the proboscis monkey, which I didn't get. While it's always difficult to choose a favorite, I do really like the stylish look of Jack Rourke here. It puts a Jack, or male donkey, in a white suit, like the one Mr. Rourke on Fantasy Island always wore. Maybe I'm imagining that connection, but it tickles the pop culture lover in me to make it. The only piece in this entire collection that I'm a little put off by is evil Buck Weathers here. It's just a light colored version of Buck Weathers. I like the challenging of preconceived concepts by making the evil one lighter colored and the, I'm guessing, good one darker colored, but I would have rather seen one of these be a unique design. Amanda Fissell's Feral series is available now from specialty shops worldwide, as well as from KidRobot.com directly. Let me know your thoughts on this release by commenting below, as well as liking or disliking this video on YouTube. And please remember to subscribe to the CoArt YouTube channel to be kept up to date on my reviews. Thank you for watching me, Nick Curtis, the Art Toy Advocate.